Hey everybody and welcome to Gichelle Tech TV. So today I'm going to be talking about my project. At Lambda School we have Build Weeks and I started Lambda School last year in April and I just completed the back end portion of the curriculum. So this is where you learn how to build an API and a database using Node, Express, and SQL. So for this build week, I was the backend architect for a web application called Restaurant Passports. So the purpose of the app is basically a passport except for restaurants. And so users can make a list of restaurants they, they either want to go to or have been, and they can rate them, write notes about them, and put in, put in information like what city the restaurant is in and any notes they want to add. To keep track of that list, it has to be stored somewhere, and that's where I came in to build the API in the database where the data gets stored um, by the user. So today I'm going to be showing you a little bit of that API. I'm gonna be demonstrating the features of the API and showing you just how it works. So let's go. So I'm gonna be demonstrating my API locally. Right now I have VS Code opened. So I'm gonna be running Yarn server to get the server started. Code, I'm gonna open up a terminal and type in the command yarn server. So as you can see, server is running on HTTP localhost 5000. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that into Postman, which is how I'm gonna be testing out my endpoints. So in Postman, I'm gonna keep this at a get request and I'm gonna make that get request to localhost 5000. Send the request. And we get a status of 200 OK, which means that the request was successful. And also, you can see my custom uh, message here where it says it's up. So um, where that's coming from is the server.js. So in server.js, if you make a request to um, my server, then it's going to give you that message. But this could really be anything. It could be the API is running. I can save that and the API is going to start over. And if I send another request, the API is running. So it's successful. That's how I know it's successful and other developers using the this API will know as well when they make a request to that endpoint. So this is my API documentation and it's basically showing a developer how to use it. So the first thing is the authorization endpoint. So when a user goes to register behind the scenes, they're basically making a post request um, to the API. And uh, same thing with login, they're basically making a post request. And so um, once they do that, then it gives them the authorization. Um, to change anything or add restaurants um, for their accounts. So when they register, there are certain criteria. They have to have a username, password, a name, a city, and an email. So behind the scenes, this is what it looks like. Um, of course, to a user, usually it's a pretty nice form but behind the scenes, it's just a raw JSON body. But this is what we need from a user in order to authorize them to use the application on the user level. And pretty much everything is a string. Um, the only constraint I have here is that the username must be unique. Um, up on login, they will need a username and password, which they already put here. But for login, that's typically what you'll need, a username and password. Um, and so that gives them the authorization to go ahead and start posting restaurants, which I'll get to in just a second. But I, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate um, as far as uh, a user registering to this endpoint and logging in. So again, this is behind the scenes. Normally, you know, on a regular application, it doesn't look like this. Um, but on the back end, um, all a user is doing is making a post request. And so I'm going to show you that now. 
Okay, so we already we already have the application running in Postman, so the API is still running. Um, so, according to my documentation, in the way I in the way I built this for a user to register, we're gonna have to go to the API slash all slash register endpoint. So I'm gonna just paste this endpoint into Postman, and it goes right after the base URL here. Okay, so uh, again, now when they register, this is a post request. So I can no longer have it set to get, I have to make a post request. I set it up to where when you're making that post request, you have to include all these details. So I'm basically just gonna paste this into Postman and uh, click on body. raw json because it's a json object json json all right so i'm going to edit the information here um so username i'll put uh, foodie lover password one two three four name um the foodie city um tomato and then obviously I'm just making up stuff here. Email, I'll put uh, foodie lover222 at food.com. All right, and I'm gonna format this properly as a JSON body. Okay, so just to make sure we have everything, it's a post request being sent to the register endpoint. Um, and so we're, we're gonna register this user and we're gonna go ahead and send that request. Okay, so as you can see here, we get a status code of 201 created. So that means the request has been fulfilled. And you can also see on the right side that um, the object is set up. So it created the user. And for security purposes, the password is hashed before it gets saved to the database. A token is also generated and it certifies the identity of that user. So I'm gonna open my database. Um, first of all, I use SQLite and I'm gonna open the database here. So this is our database. So right now, because I'm running this locally, everything is getting saved locally. So if I go to my users table and go to the data and refresh, I can see that Foodie Lava has been created. So remember over in Postman, I created Foodie Lava. <laughs> and um, the password is hashed, so you wouldn't be able to know the password of that user for security. And I have their name here, city, and email. So now that we have that user created, that user has to now log in. So I'm gonna go back to um, postman and um, according to my documentation API slash auth slash login is the endpoint that points a user to uh, logging in and giving that user authorization so the only thing I'm gonna do is take away the name city and email because um, the way I set it up is that they only need a username and password um, to gain authorization to the restaurants and being able to start posting and actually using the application. So I'm gonna go ahead and send a request to the login. We got a 200 okay, so that status code is a successful request, so that user is successfully logged in. And they have a token here up on login, and that token, I set it up to um, expire after one hour. So in my authorization folder, this is the JSON token information. So right here, the expires in, I set it to one hour. So after that, the user would have to log in again and get another token. So now this user, Foodie Lover, can post to the API. So how will this user post to the API? Well, this is what shows a developer how they can set it up to actually have a user post to this API. So I have several, I have some different methods here 
Um, you can get a list of restaurants. You can get a restaurant by ID. You can post a new restaurant. You can edit an existing entry and delete. So right now I'm just gonna be showing you how to post a sample request. And in order for a user to do that, first of all, let's go to the endpoint. So API slash restaurants. Um, now, how, how this will work is that um, when a developer is using this, um, it has to post to that user's ID. So Foodie Lover has an ID, a user ID of three. So what we'll have to do in the in Postman is go to the restaurant's endpoint first of all, and go to the user ID of three. So that's how it'll go to that specific user's account. And I'm gonna paste or copy first a sample uh, request body and paste it into Postman. I'm gonna change just a few things here. So where does this uh, user want to go? Red Lobster. And we'll change the address to 21 Jump Street, um, City, Random City. I'll keep the zip code the same. Uh, website lobsters.com and a rating of three and I'll just put the food was okay and keep stamp true because um, stamp means stamped is if the user has been to the restaurant or not because this app still can serve the purpose of adding restaurants that they want to visit and have not yet so stamped um, in my in the request body stamp is considered a boolean so it's either true or false on or off so it's defaulted to false when a user does this on on the actual front end of the application they have the option to select if they've been there or not so i'll just put keep it at true and i'll go ahead and format this properly okay so just to make sure we have everything so this is a post request to api slash restaurants user id 3 and looks like we have everything for the body and let's send it up. All right, so as you can see, that was posted. And just to verify that, I'm gonna go back into the database, go to my restaurants table, and I should see that Red Lobster has been added, and it has. So you can see this is under the user ID three, which is, if you go to the user table, that's connected to Foodie Lava. So we know that this is working, we know that this user is able to add stuff and we know that it's being attached to the correct person. So that's pretty much how it works. A user can register, log in, they can post. So that's just a little bit of how the API works. What I wanna do next is I'm going to create another user because I want to show a little bit more about how it would work on the database side. So let's just say if there's thousands of thousands of users and you just wanna see certain information about these users and you don't necessarily wanna see like um, everything in the restaurants table. So I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit of that in one second. So first what I'm gonna do is create another user. We're gonna change this back to a post request and make sure we have the correct endpoint. And what I wanna do is just make sure we have a good amount of users in the database to um, show you some SQL statements on how to find the information that you're looking for in the database. So this user is gonna be like to eat a lot and the password eat eat 222, I don't know. Name city foodie. NYC.
Okay, so like to eat a lot has been registered and we can go to our database, refresh the users table. So there's like to eat a lot. Who is user four? So we're gonna log in this user. And we're gonna have that user post a restaurant. And we're gonna do a restaurant they haven't been to. So let's just say that this user see, you know, they see a restaurant they wanna visit, but they haven't yet. So I'm gonna change stamp to false. Really cool, cool restaurant. And they don't necessarily even have to have a street address. Um, these, this field is not required, so I'll take some of that out. They at least need to know where the city, they don't need really the zip code, I'll keep it there. Phone number, website, no one's really gonna know all that realistically, so I don't have those fields as required. The only thing required is the restaurant name and stamped. So I'll just put, well, they haven't been there, so they can have a rating. And for notes, we can just put, want to go here. All right, so we're gonna post to the restaurant's endpoint. So this is user, this is user four. So we're gonna post to slash restaurants slash an idea for okay really really cool restaurant has been created so we go over to our restaurants table and we see really really cool restaurant and we see some null values here because those those weren't inputted because they are not required we now have a pretty good list of users so we have four users now and five restaurants but you know imagine if you have thousands of users and thousands of restaurants and you're like okay i just want to see user one or i kind of like how the api will work when a user is logged in they should only be able to see their restaurants and um, on the front end that's how it would be set up a user is only seeing their restaurants so but we can sort through that right now user one has the most posts so i'm user one i'm test user so let's just say I only wanna see information about test user. So we have two different tables. So obviously we're gonna to have to go back and forth in order to um, get that information. I'm gonna to have to go to restaurants table and see, okay, user one has been here and here. But there is a way to um, see all that in one table um, using SQL statements. So I'm going to write some SQL statements here so that I'll be able to see only users one stuff. And I don't necessarily wanna know everything about user one. Um, I don't necessarily wanna know everything about the restaurant. I only wanna know certain information. First of all, the most basic SQL statement is select all from, and we'll do restaurants table. Okay, so I've queried the restaurants table. So that's everything. But again, I only want to know user one and maybe I just want to know the name of the restaurant, the city, the location, and also some other good, another thing is if I type in the users table, if I select the users table, That's gonna return the user's uh, information. So what if I wanna know the user's name, the restaurant name, and you know, side by side. First of all, I'm going to start with a basic SQL statement. I'm gonna go back to select all from, yeah, let's do restaurants table. So we're back at the restaurants table. But what data what data do I want from the restaurants table? First of all, um, to make it easier, I'm gonna name the restaurants table R. So as R, which is saying that um, that's just a shortcut for, instead of having to type in restaurants table every time, we'll just need to type R to get that information. So I can just now say R dot, so it's gonna populate for you. So I just want the restaurant name, 
Maybe what's some other good information? Maybe the city. And I want to know my notes about the restaurant. And I'd also like to know my rating. So if I format that and run the query, now I just have the name of the restaurant, the city, the notes, and the rating. But I don't know where this information is coming from. I don't know who said this or what. So I'm gonna have to join the users table to sort out that information. Add a join, the join keyword. And I wanna join the users table. And I'm gonna name the users table U for short so that I can just type in U uh, instead of users table every time. So there is a foreign key called user ID on the restaurants table. If we were to go back to that, you'll see the user ID, um, but that's the only information we have. So we have to join users table as you on our dot user ID so that we'll know that user ID is coming from the users table. So now we'll have access to that table as well, so we're joining both together. So that equals u.id, which means that that ID is coming from the user's table. Now, one more thing. I only wanna see test user, so test user had an ID of one. So we wanna write that conditional as where. User ID equals one. The information that I want from the user's table is and I'm actually gonna write that first um, so that it appears before the restaurant information. So I want the user, the name of the person. Let's do the city of the person. Now I also want to make the table more readable. So right now um, these naming conventions are fine. But to make it more readable for the user, for the name of the user, we'll call it name. And instead of restaurant name, we'll call that restaurant. And we'll call rating rating. So now if I run the query, now I'm only seeing test user in test users restaurants. So that is how I'm able to sort through this and how it can work on a front end. So you can only show a specific users um, restaurants and you can get only the information that you want to see. So again, restaurants table, that's gonna show everything, all the users, users shows all the users, but by writing these simple SQL statements, you can sort through the data as you need to and just get exactly what you need from this. So test user has been to two restaurants so far and it'll keep accumulating. So every time test user posts a new restaurant, it's just gonna keep going and going. And same with the other users under their uh, specific user ID. So that is pretty much my API. It was the first API I built uh, as part of a team and um, it was really fun. It took about, uh, well, we did build week for about um, two weeks. And um, as, as a part-time student, um, we get two weeks to build our product. And it was the first API that I built that somebody is actually using. And I just think it's really cool to be able to build something that somebody else is gonna use to manipulate data. So I thought it was pretty cool, pretty awesome. Backend is really fun. Um, and so I'll be doing more Lambda School videos for other developers. Um, if you wanna network for, if you're new to code and you just wanna see like, you know, more about it, or if you're interested in attending Lambda School, I'll be doing a Lambda School series, so it's ongoing, I'll be posting more about my projects, more about what I'm doing, blogging about it as well at jashelle.blog. And you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash um, and reach out, connect with me, and I'll see you next time.